Welcome to Prep Talk. Good morning. How are you this fine? What is it? Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, November 28th, 2023. The year just moves right along, doesn't it? Taking no prisoners. <laughs> so there's kind of been a couple of things that's happened um, over the past week. Um, the weather has sure been shooting us some crap, hasn't it? I know here in northwestern Missouri, um, we got quite a bit of snow. Freezing, freezing cold temperatures. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been it's been quite a deal. Uh, my husband's been off work. He he's the superintendent of a golf course. So needless to say, he's been home. So I've been stuck in a perpetual Sunday. If you if you know what I mean, yeah. So anyway, back 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 to back to work back to work. So uh, I'm sure that you have seen on the news because shockingly I saw it on the news this morning. So I'm really surprised that we're seeing it on the news. To be perfectly honest, um, but let me show you. Let me show you what we got on the desk. So in case you haven't heard, China has another outbreak. So right now, nobody's freaking out, okay? Um, it's a it's a pneumonia, my, a mycoplasma pneumonia. Um, they are seeing a large spike, uh, specifically in children. Uh, it was first reported by China's National Health Commission on November 13th. In a press conference, the illnesses have caused a surge in hospitalizations, which, with many hospitals warning of long waits, the situation came into the spotlight this week when the WHO, the World Health Organization, asked China for more information, citing a report by the Program for Monitoring Emerging Diseases on clusters of undiagnosed pneumonia in children and it goes on it will tell you where the spike is occurring who's most affected uh, and is this is this like the COVID and they're saying no not not as far as we know yet now keep in mind this brings back a giant deja vu for me okay because I remember Three years ago, in my where I used to sit, reporting on this new thing that was coming over from China, this new sickness, and nobody was freaking out yet. I was saying, calm down. And it literally was but a few weeks later, and all hell was breaking loose. So, let's just all keep this in mind. So, right now... Chinese authorities have attributed the increase in incidence of the respiratory illness to the circulation of known pathogens such as influenza, mycoplasma pneumonia, respiratory syncytial virus, which is that RSV you've heard of, and SARS-CoV-2, the virus that caused COVID-19. So far... Let's go ahead and knock on that wood. So far, no new illnesses have been identified. And according to the WHO, mycoplasma pneumonia, a common bacterial infection which typically affects younger children, is likely to be what is affecting most of the patients under the age of 18. And they go on telling us why they think, why they think it's happening, um, how they're dealing with it, and so on. So right now, nobody's freaking out, okay? 
I think it's mostly hitting their children, which is, ugh. Um, it's something to keep our eye on. Keep our eye on, you know, when they, when they quit talking about it on the news, okay, that's when you really got to get on the internet and start finding out your own news. Because when they quit talking about it, they're hiding it, okay? So it's either going to get resolved and calm down, or they're going to quit talking about it. And if it's resolved, they're going to talk about that resolve. Okay, they're going to say, oh, hey, we're on top of it. Everybody's well. Nobody's died. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be great. That's what you're going to hear. If you don't hear that, you're going to hear nothing. And that's when you need to look look into it. But the, the, the mycoplasma pneumonia infections are not uncommon and you can go to the CDC. I'll post all these links as I always do uh, to look into that more. So um, yesterday what the F yesterday China claims it drove American ship out of contested waters. U.S. calls it an innocent passage. We were just innocently floating by. Come, come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, latest sign of escalating tensions in the dis disputed South China Sea. China claims it launched its Navy and Air Force to warn away a U.S. warship out of the area. While the U.S. Navy says the destroyer hopper passed through the area on a legal operation. And what they're referring to is this innocent passage thing uh, th th that's kind of an unwritten um, agreement among countries, okay? Um, the U.S. Navy acknowledged the USS Hopper passed through the territory near, a, near the Paracel Islands, but said it was engaging in innocent passage through the disputed territory, which is claimed by China, Vietnam, and Taiwan, the Seventh Fleet Public Affairs said in a statement. Now, okay, here's my, here's my issue with this. With what's going on, there is no innocent passage. There is no reason at all that any of those countries, specifically China, specifically China, there is no reason at all that they should consider that an innocent passage. And also, we should know that. Because we, however I say that, knowing we let a balloon fly over our country corner to corner, that being said, we should know that that is not going to be looked at as an innocent passage. But here we are. Innocent passage of territorial seas is allowed as long as it is not prejudicial to the peace, good order, or security of the coastal state. This is according to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which governs maritime activity for 168 countries and the European Union. China, Vietnam, and Taiwan each require either permission or advanced notification before a military vessel passes through the disputed territory. But the U.S. Navy said calls the requirement of violation of international law and does not abide by it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. But I'm going to play devil's advocate. If I were China and you couldn't pick up the phone and go, hey, yo, we're fixing to float by. We ain't doing nothing. Just letting you know. Come on. Come on. 
we were we were seeing what was going to happen, and China told China told us what was going to happen. All right. Another situation we need to be keeping our eye on, because this this is a scary one. Okay, not saying it's going to happen, but it's a scary one. Chinese is a hard language to learn, people. Not 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 lying to you. Hard language to learn. Um, and this is going to cause a lot of trouble, uh, specifically when it comes to the supply chain. Okay, we get so. I mean, as we as we found out when we had the pandemic, we get so much of our stuff from there. And that China passage, that gets shut down. Even if they are going to do business with this where it's not going to get here. So, this is, this is no joke. This, this one concerns me. Of all the war that is going on, this is the one that concerns me the most. Is, is the business with China. Because basically they have been sitting there chopping the bit for years. They've already infiltrated into the United States. They own hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres of land already in the United States. They came up through Mexico. There are no less than 13 Chinese-owned bio labs on U.S. soil. Okay. This is no joke. Our leaders don't seem to take it seriously. And we'll pay the price for that. I'm not going to lie. Another thing to keep your eye on. The U.S. General's gut feeling of war with China sparks alarm over predictions. A leaked memo forecasting the Taiwan Strait conflict in 2025 triggers a, dis a debate about undisciplined comments. <laughs> a leaked memo from a U.S. four-star general <laughs> saying his gut told him the U.S. will be at war with China in 2025 has prompted warnings about the danger of undisciplined predictions of a Taiwan Strait conflict. Look. The man speaking his mind, and of anybody's mind that I'm going to listen to, it's going to be his. I personally don't think it's going to take to 2025. <laughs> this memo uh, by the head of the U.S. Air Mobility Command, General Mike Minahan, was the latest prediction of a Chinese military invasion of Taiwan, which have ranged from... 2022 to 2049. 2049, no way it's going to take that long. It's triggered a debate about U.S. readiness, accusations of warmongering, <laughs> and concerns about desensitizing people to the real risk of invasion. China's government claims Taiwan as a province, and its authoritarian leader, Xi Jinping, is set on what he terms a reunification. Same thing Russia's doing with the Ukraine. By force, if necessary. It's a prospect Taiwan's government and people vehemently reject. Around this impasse, tensions are escalating. Yep, yep, yep. And here we are. Here we are. Spread six ways to Sunday. So now's the time for them to move. Now is the time for them to move. Now, this uh, whole Taiwan thing has uh, also spawned a lot of talk about Russia wanting to take back some U.S. territory that they once owned, like Alaska. In fact, at one time, Russia controlled 20% of U.S. territory. Back in uh, 2020, local leaders in a small American town gathered for a contentious vote on whether to take down a statue 
that honored a man who was, at one assessment read, steeped in racial division, violence, and injustice. Would they join local leaders from cities like Virginia, Alabama, and other states to remove a memorial praising a figure who symbolized a historical trauma that still caused anguish and anger among their constituents? The statue, though, had nothing to do with the Confederacy or the Civil War. Rather, this vote took place in Alaska, in a small coastal town of Sitka, population 8,400, located on an island about halfway between Anchorage and Vancouver, British Columbia. And the statue was a Russian, a merchant, by the name of Alexander Baranov, a key figure in Russia's conquest of Alaska over 200 years ago. The resolution authorizing the removal said Baranov, who was Alaska's first colonial governor, directly oversaw enslavement of Tlingit and Alawit people, a policy that was often justified under a theory of racial and cultural superiority. Baranov's criminality, which included, among other things, the violation of native women and murder and theft of indigenous property, was so depraved that local Tlingit nicknamed him No Heart. And there you are with Alexander Baranov's statue being taken down. Even with new reassessments of European colonization of North America, as well as the recent spike in scholarship regarding the U.S. bloodied imperialism across the American West, Russia's role in smothering and seizing Alaska stands apart as an overlooked chapter of col colonialism on this continent. Uh, and this link will be there for you to look at. Yeah. They want it back. There's talk. And we're not the only one. They 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 want to expand a lot, take a lot of land back. So we'll see. We'll see. So Reuters on October twelfth said this: U.S. must be ready for simultaneous wars with China and Russia. Report says, and I've I've been saying this for the last three weeks. United States must prepare for possible simultaneous wars with Russia and China by expanding its conventional forces, strengthening alien alliances, and enhancing its nuclear weapon modernization program. And of course, this was pre before what went down in Islam, in Palestine. Okay. Yeah. We're all, we were already worried about it. And then this Palestinian thing happened. So we went there, and I'm telling you, China is ripe to move. We are going to be spread three ways. Here is our real threat. Not so much a China invasion, not so much a Russian invasion, or a Palestinian invasion. Right here, people. Right there. That's what I worry about more so. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you knew, but even recently, just last week, there was another demonstration in Washington that borderlined an insurrection, much like that winter episode I won't I won't say you know you know you know the one that happened in January yeah the Manhattan District Attorney's indictment of former President Trump for 34 felonies so far has not resulted in the death and destruction that the former president warned of and may have desired the protests near the courthouse though loud or nonviolent essentially performative Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene 
She's Republican out of Georgia, you know, who had encouraged the far-right demonstrators, left the scene after five prefunctory minutes, unable to make herself heard over the den. Now, see, they, they think that uh, a new civil war in the United States, which seemed real, if still remote, possibly immediately after January 6th, now it's starting to look less plausible, given the strength shown by the political center, 2022 midterms, and President Joe Biden's largely effective tenure in the White House. I disagree. <laughs> As the 2024 election approaches, the threat of political violence and civil breakdown is only going to increase. <coughs> and despite all that the U.S. national security and law enforcement officials have learned since the January 6th, the country is still not prepared for a far-right revolt. No, we are not. We are not. So, this is this is what I am worried about. More than the wars, which are of concern. But this is going to affect me, I feel like, first. It's going to be this, or it's going to be this pneumonia that's going to come across from China. Okay? Now, what does this mean exactly? How is this going to affect me? Well... How's this going to affect you? If you live in the city, you will be most affected. Because that's where your major protests, the civil unrest, the, the you know, people looting, people running the streets, that's where it's going to be dangerous. So if you live in the city, or even the close suburbia of the city. I mean, you need to be thinking your shit out. People like me, who live in rural areas, are probably not going to see much of the civil unrest. However, what is going to affect us up here or those of us that are out in the outskirts, it's going to be supply issues. Okay? Uh, you know, your, your factories, your trucking companies, train yards, all that stuff's down in the city. Okay? Our internet comes from the city. You see what I'm saying? If that gets disrupted, then... And I'm going to get disrupted, okay? Um, so I need didn't I need to be prepared? I need to be prepared uh, in regards to food, in regards to the things my family needs. I need to be prepared to be able to sit in place, shelter in place. I don't want to have to get out. I don't want to have to go to Walmart. And worry about what I'm gonna what I'm gonna find when I get there. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I don't I don't I don't wanna have to go to a city of any kind. Because you can innocently get caught up. Okay? So this is the type of thing you're preparing for. You're preparing to be able to sit home, stay away from the chaos, okay? Keep your family safe at home. You have what you need, preferably to get by a few weeks. You know, at one time, FEMA, um, and, I've, and I've actually <laughs> reported through all these times. At one time, I was reporting, FEMA was telling us that we needed to have, uh, what, three weeks of supply. Okay, they would like us to have three weeks of supply. And then... When the pandemic rolled around, they changed that to three months. They changed it to, to three months. So they would like you to have three months. Now, let's talk about this. Three months. 
doesn't mean you're going to be cooking meals like you're doing today. Okay? So last night, I had pork chops, fried potatoes, carrots, and corn. Okay. Not going to have this, this full meal. Okay? Preparing for months of sheltering means things like soup. Um one pot type meals stews vegetable stews you know even if you don't have meat things like that so you're going to want to be buying canned food canned meat um you know you may be looking at one to two meals a day not three okay one to two meals a day to sustain your family. It could be one large meal a day and kind of snacking the rest of the day. Just to keep your belly, you know, and then have the one large meal a day. So, keep this in mind. Now, of course, stock what you want. Alright, stock what you want. You absolutely can can pork chops. Not even gonna lie to you. Okay? And you can cook them on a fire, on an open fire. It, it, it absolutely can be done. Um, but I know when I'm packing food away, that's not what I'm thinking. That's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking basics. I'm thinking basic meal planning. Uh, basic ingredients. Nothing fancy. You know, that that's what I'm talking about. Um... Federal law describes civil disorder as any public disturbance involving acts of violence by assemblages of three or more people, which causes an immediate danger or results in the damage or injury to the property or person of any other individual. So a recent report described four primary triggers for civil unrest. Sporting events, which we've seen that like in Brazil, at those, as those football games, those soccer games, they go bananas. Parties, fairs, and concerts. Uh, we saw this. Didn't that happen in Palestine? Okay. Reactions to law enforcement actions and political or economic activities. And I have been saying this upcoming uh, political cycle, this election, this is going to cause a lot of issues. Um, the report shows that the latter two reasons have surpassed the first two in the past few years. These events are more violent and spread to more than uh, one area of the city. So, just stay home. Just make it so you can stay home. Make it so you don't have to go to the store. Well, now, we go to the store every week. Okay, we do. Do I have to? No. No, I do not. I, I do not. Okay, because the fact of the matter is, I could not go to the store for quite a few weeks. <laughs> okay, I could not go to the store for a couple of months. Okay, if, if needed be, if needed be. So, um, that's what I'm talking about. This is, this is what. I worry about more than invasions of other country. The people of the United States are done. They're tired. They're over it. The pandemic really opened our eyes to the deceit that this country plagues us with day in and day out. We don't even know what to believe anymore okay we, we don't even know what to believe and even if this pneumonia does cross the pond like COVID did we're not going to believe anything about it we're not going to believe anything the government says about it nobody's going to wear a mask no nobody's going to no. it, it's not going to be that way 
It's not going to be that way. Trump. <laughs> I mean, do I even need to say anything? It doesn't matter what, what he's still running. He's still in the lead in the polls. That's a, that's a real thing that can happen. Anyway, here we are, doing our best. Don't be scared, be prepared. I think we covered all of it today. You know, if you, it, do, do the least you can do. Because you're not going to get any help, and you don't want to get out. You don't want to get out where people are being crazy every day. There's a shooting at a mall, at a Walmart, at a doctor's office. It's all the time, all the freaking time. Yeah, it's scary, scary business. But don't be scared, be prepared. Um, get that stuff, do, do what you can for your family. Just make it so you don't have to go anywhere is really the most important thing. Um, Pay attention to what's happening. If you quit hearing about something, then you need to find out why. Because there's two reasons that they quit reporting. One is the problem's solved. The other is we're screwed. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, so go out, do your thing. Grab an extra this or that. Grab an extra package of water, grab an extra thing of ramen noodles, grab a couple of extra cans of veggies or soups, okay, throw a bag of, if you can, throw a bag of charcoal somewhere where it's dry, you can forget about it, handy as hell when it comes to cooking, okay, all right. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I love ya. Nana Prep, out.